There's nothing like a wedding day. Join us as we reflect on J.D. and Brooke's big day on Family Vision. Hi, my name is J.D. Reno. Welcome to Family Vision with my parents, Dr. Rob and Amy Reno. Strengthening families through practical, encouraging, and real conversations. Rob and Amy Reno here with Visionary Family Ministries. Something that we love to do on Family Vision is just share our lives with you. Family Vision is like a community where we get to hear from and talk with so many of you. And we hope that you get to know us in a personal way as well. So in this episode, we just want to tell you about J.D. and Brooke's wedding. They're on their honeymoon right now as we're recording this. And they were married just six days ago. So, honey, we're just going to reflect, share some of our stories from uh, J.D. and Brooke's relationship and, of course, their big day. We are praising God. We are in the afterglow of a wonderful uh, wedding, a wonderful union of Brooke and J.D., And they were a happy, happy couple, just so excited to begin their lives together. And that joy that they had really was the joy of the day. And then all the beauty and all the flower, everything else adds to it. Nothing overshadows a happy bride and groom. So that was wonderful. Yeah, And the happiness for us and for Scott and Sherry, Mm -hmm. Brooke's parents, you know, as Christian parents— You pray, right? You start Mm -hmm. praying when your child's little for their future spouse. And at the end of the day, all you really want is, in in this case for us, for our son to love the Lord and for him to fall in love with a young woman who loves the Lord and for them as a couple to desire to go into marriage uh, with the desire to have Christ at the center of their relationship. And that's exactly what the Lord blessed us with. So you talk about this afterglow, it really is special. So you asked me to share what I shared at the rehearsal dinner. And we have a very interesting path, Rob and I. This is our third child getting married. And we've learned some things, right, through this process. And you are always praying for this couple, you know, to either grow. It's Once the relationship starts, you want them either growing closer together or if it's not the one, we pray that God will make that clear, too. And that's an important process for us, that we know that, you know, God uses many different experiences, and each one of those experiences in the journey as a couple is another prayer point, I would say, that we're you know, praying, okay, show us, show JD, first and foremost, if this is the one, and then confirm it through the family. It's obviously your child's decision, first and foremost, do you want them listening to the Holy Spirit in this search for their spouse? But God has given us some sweet confirmations along the way. And one of my favorites is J.D. actually called me the first time he took Brooke out to lunch. End of his freshman year, he called me on that day and said, you know, I just want you to know I took a girl out to lunch today. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And he started telling me a little bit about her, and he told me that she was a worship leader at Olivet, like she led worship in chapel. Well, of course, my antennas went up immediately, because here's the backstory in that. For each of our children, I've always asked the Lord to give me like a vision of who they are. So for example, our Debbie was child of strength, Lissy was child of grace, I mean, and I mean when they were you know in the womb. And I start praying, and I pick a worship song for them. And for J.D., he was child of praise. And as a little child, he fit that so well. In fact, every time he put his hands up in the air, if we said praise the Lord, J.D. would put his hands up in the air. He brought, like, joy everywhere he went. He had so um, many—just one of those kind of smiling and mischievous personalities somewhat, too, but just made strangers laugh everywhere. But when he went into the junior high phase, he did ask if he could play guitar to learn to play guitar. And we got him a few lessons, and he was amazing at guitar. But it was kind of like pulling teeth to get him to play guitar most of the time. He would play for me at in church. I'd ask him to be in my Some worship team. Some bribery was involved. Some bribery, yes, was involved. I, I forced him. To, well, that's a whole other story for another day. But I don't want to go too deep into that because well, we won't get though. off of it. <laughs> but... But let's just say 
Child of Praise probably wasn't the thing that most people would say when they saw JT from junior high through. Fair. You know, it was a little more reserved, a little more, you know, he, he still had that that lightheartedness and that joy in him. It's just that in a lot of settings, you may not have necessarily noticed that as much. So when he called me and said he was dating a, a girl who was leading worship, immediately I was like, child of praise, you know, coming back. And one of the joys that we have seen is watching Brooke transform JD and bringing this part of him, like he's actually played worship at Olivet Chapel. He leads worship with her at the church that she's working at. And that has just been a great Holy Spirit confirmation to me that even from, you know, the earliest of times that he, this part of his personality that the Lord put into him is is coming out. And a lot of that through his relationship with Brooke. For sure. It's been great to get to know Brooke's family too. Mm -hmm. Her father, also a pastor pastor. and ministry leader. So it's two pastor's (laughs) kids getting married with all the blessings and challenges thereof. They had a huge bridal party. Huge. Uh, If you're looking to see some pictures on Instagram, what have you been putting up? Oh, I just like to document our live with little reels and pictures. I am not a Facebook person, never been on Facebook at all, but I do dabble with Instagram mostly for myself just to have these fun little, you know, records of our live because I I tried scrapbooking. That was... um, Flop. I'm not giving up on that. I think maybe that'll come back in a different season, but so far that has not really taken off. But I do enjoy putting things together on Instagram. So I've been doing some reels. I'll do another one of the wedding day. So and on then, Visionary Family Ministries on Instagram, if correct. you don't already follow us there, make sure correct. you follow, and uh, then you'll get to see some of these some of these great videos. Well, Brooke has an incredible eye for design. They had a huge bridal party because you have so many friends from college and sisters. There were a lot of people. Um, J.D. had uh, – R.W. was his best man, and then his best friend was the other best man. Brooke's two sisters were her maids of honor. And then there were cousins and um, just so many good friends. But Brooke had all the bridesmaids in different – the same dress but different colors. And they literally were the colors of the rainbow. It was so much color. And then the groomsmen had just a like a pocket square that matched there. So there was a lot of color. And frankly, I don't know if she tied everything together Well, the, with her designs and her signs and her programs, which just made everything come together so beautifully. But one of the things, again, that the Lord used to confirm their relationship, I thought it was so wonderful, was all these colors. Because for many years, I've been, I don't want to say many, maybe two years, three years, I've been using this phrase that God wants his rainbow back, meaning that the rainbow was never intended to be a symbol of human pride in any way. In fact, it's quite the opposite because God gave uh, Noah and his family the rainbow as a covenant sign that God would never destroy the world again with a flood uh, due to humankind's wickedness and evil. So really, the rainbow never had anything to do with pride. In fact, it's all about humility because God had just displayed his power, his righteousness, his judgment, but also his great love and his ability to save those from their sins. That's the true story of Noah and the flood and the promise that we see in the rainbow. And yet the rainbow has been taken over as a sign of human pride And I thought it was so amazing that my daughter-in-law had chose this beautiful colors of the rainbow and had a wedding in June that was all about God's love and God's promises and their commitment to not only pursue each other, but to pursue the Lord. J.D. had made a cross that he worked on himself, and that was the center of their ceremony. So they got married in front of a cross with these beautiful flowers under it. They really just were all about the gospel and sharing the truth of who God is in that ceremony. A couple of my highlights. One was just how beautiful you were. Thank you. Your dress was amazing. Made me think back to our wedding day, and we were on a date last night. I was just remembering how pretty you were on the wedding day. It was really special. And then I was given the honor of officiating. Yes. They asked me to be the minister or the pastor. People have always asked me, well, do you like— tell your kids you want to do that or something. I'm like, no, I, 
I'm going to be happy being father of the groom or for my daughter's father of the bride. But if they want to ask me to officiate, I would just love it. But being a part of that moment up front with them, in this mm-hmm. case with J.D. and Brooke, it's like the three of you for a lot yeah, of, it's very of special. the time. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite moments, though, is – uh, before the bride walks down the aisle. So I'm standing in the middle, JD's to my left, mm-hmm. you know, father-son moment. Because you know this story, like in our wedding, the most overwhelming emotional moment for me was when the doors in the sanctuary opened and I saw you mm-hmm. at the back for the first time and with mm-hmm. your dad coming down the aisle. Mm-hmm. It was like just overwhelmed with how beautiful you were and how excited I was. So being able to be next to JD and having him experience that moment, like mm-hmm. from his perspective, mm-hmm. seeing the doors uh, at the barn, in our case, uh, open and her coming down with her dad was awesome. Can I ask you a question about that? Because we did pictures beforehand as well, and they did as well. And that does not take away from that moment it as a for groom. Me. And that's what I've heard over and over from other grooms, that that really, like it didn't matter that you'd seen me earlier with some pictures. Like that moment was still very powerful. Like that's Yeah, no what question. You, yeah, which is really cool. And that's the memory, yes. hands down, I remember the most from yeah. our wedding day. Another special part to me, and that had to do with the ceremony, I always ask a couple to choose a scripture for their wedding day, and I'm going to base my message to them you know, on the scripture. You know, I've done a lot of weddings over the years. Somebody asked me, so do you sort of kind of say the same thing? I'm like, well, for my son and <laughs> his bride, I don't think I'm just going to recycle <laughs> right, the right. one from 18 months ago. Like I'm going to yeah, start right. fresh, okay? Right. So the scripture that uh, they chose was from Psalm 118, verse 24. It says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I never done a wedding with that scripture as the centerpiece, nor had I ever preached on it. Mm-hmm. It's a very common, verse. common, popular verse for Christians. Very fitting for a wedding day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be Absolutely. glad in it. But the verse also kind of begs the question, well, what about the days that aren't happy, joyful celebrations? What about the days where you're in grief and you're mm-hmm. and in sadness? Can we say this is the day the Lord has made? Let us rejoice and be glad in it on those days. So studying the psalm, I think really for the first time, I was amazed to kind of find the answer to that question of what, how can you rejoice and celebrate even on dark days? And the answer is sandwiched above and below Mm -hmm. verse 24. So if you go back two verses earlier, it says, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and this is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. And of course, the stone the builders rejected is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's an Old Testament prophecy about Christ. So Jesus is here featured prominently. And then you find the verse, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then the next two verses, the other side of the sandwich says, save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, that's also Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what they're shouting on Palm Sunday. And so it's because Christ has come, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is coming again because Christ has promised an inheritance for us, that like we are safe, we are secure in him, that even if there's an earthly day that's filled with grief and difficulty of which there are going to be plenty for J.D. and Brooke Mm -hmm. ahead, that they're still able to wake up in the morning and say, this is the day the Lord has made. Uh, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, you did a wonderful job with the ceremony. In fact, we had couple people come up to me and say how impactful it was to them. So that's just an encouragement that a wedding ceremony, what happens in the ceremony is very important. And that is part of a covenant. And, you know, often people think of the reception and all the fun that's happening, but really the ceremony is where covenant is being made. And that's what people take away often is what happens during the ceremony. And I think there was unusual impact from the scripture readings. Yes, yes. Brooke's absolutely. grandmother yeah, she read from amazing. Genesis 2, and your father, mm-hmm. JD's grandfather, read from Ephesians chapter 5. So to have like two believing grandparents yes. read these scriptures over their grandchildren was really powerful. I would say very, very powerful. And I had a lot of people impact on that as well. And this was a DIY wedding. I always struggle saying those letters together. Don't ask me why, but I do. 
And our wonderful friends, the Hansons, offered their barn for them to get married in. So they were kind of our connection. And because the Sherwoods had to come from out of town, there it was really an all hands on deck with all sorts of people helping. And a wedding like this is a very humbling experience because you need so much help. And our friends and the Sherwoods friends came alongside and did so much. Kim, the caterer, was a friend of uh, the Sherwoods, I know, but I think a close friend of Sherry's, and she did an amazing job. The food was exceptional. My friend Charlene cooked the helped us cook all that rehearsal dinner food. It was truly not only amazing but humbling for us to be the recipient of so much help and understanding that we really couldn't do it without all that help. And in fact, I had such a funny experience. I didn't even tell you this, but I went to the orthodontist today. And the two receptionists there started asking me about the wedding. I'm like, how do you know about the wedding? They are the sisters of Joyce. Joyce Pfeiffer? Yes. Do you believe that? No, I don't believe that. <laughs> I know. I was shocked. I was like, are you kidding me? Joyce was key in this I know whole Joyce, operation. Joyce like, did the wedding cake. I know Joyce was amazing. And I was just... Well, both of the receptions are sisters of Joyce. I'm like, how did I never know this? I've been coming to that orthodontist for how many years now? And Joyce is a good friend of ours. Her son, Keenan was in the wedding. So, again, a humbling experience to have so many friends do so much. I can't thank them enough. I'm still not tied up this wedding because I still have to all my thank you notes and thank you um, gifts to people. But it has been a humbling experience to receive all that help. But it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Also, it poured rain on their wedding. And uh, similar to ours, we had monsoon rains on our wedding morning. Do you even remember that? Oh, I remember all these. (laughs) I don't think you do. All the details, honey. Are you kidding? I replay them frequently. Well, I told Brooke and JD because when it poured and poured on our wedding day in the morning, and then we had a beautiful ceremony, and they had their beautiful ceremony, and the rain did not. But it came during the reception, and... Then all the bridal party went out and danced in the rain. Like, um, I know you were stressed that they were going to slip and fall and crack their head on the dance floor. When they came back in on the concrete dance floor. I know. I was aware of that danger, too. But I'm a little more of a... Throwing my 10-year-old in the air. (laughs) It was fine. They threw him before they got completely soaked. Oh, in that case, it's... We're all good. I was totally wrong about that then. (laughs) So, I mean, at the end of the day, we're really thanking the Lord for Brooke and for her family, for God bringing J.D. and Brooke together. And as parents... There's a lot of gratitude for the Lord in just recognizing that J.D. and Brooke are so far ahead yes. of where we were yes. when we got married as far as spiritual unity in their relationship, praying together in their relationship, spiritual connection, vision for their own family. Mm-hmm. So we talk a lot at VFM about just asking the Lord for generational progress, mm-hmm. that we want our kids to be further ahead of us in mm-hmm. the next generation. And this is something the Lord has blessed us with, with J.D. and Brooke. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts from today's conversation. Maybe you've got some wedding stories from your kids, or maybe you'd like to ask us to join in praying for your children's future spouses. We're still praying. We've got four younger children waiting for the Lord to answer those prayers in his time for them. But we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at podcast at visionaryfam.com. That's podcast at visionaryfam.com. Share these wedding memories. Share with us your prayer requests. And if you're not already a subscriber to the Family Vision Podcast, please push that follow or subscribe button, push that notification bell so that you do not miss an upcoming episode. And we look forward to our next time together with you on Family Vision. Family Vision.